Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew and today we're talking about AMD and FSR 3 that has finally been released. I've had the opportunity to try it on both Forspoken as well as Immortals of Avium. I got a couple of videos uploaded. Uh, you'll probably see those before you see this one because they take forever to upload nowadays. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of history about me when it comes to magic. Um, I, I, I define magic as anything that's not native resolution or upscaling techniques which pretty much i mean there's always been upscaling techniques of, of some sort but for me when when we started getting it on the playstation 4 pro we started getting what was called checkerboard rendering using the uh, fp32 uh <laughs> to uh <laughs> or whatever it was called rapid pack math or whatever that you know mark cerny said at first i didn't I didn't really have too much of a problem with it. You know what I mean? But then as I started to notice, um, I really like open world games. So when I'm in those worlds, there's usually a lot of vegetation. There's usually a lot of uh, um, other things. And so I would started to notice it would look really fuzzy on, on a 4K screen. And when you're when you're like super picky, you know, you just got that, you know, you're looking at things. You're uh, I, I do consider myself more of like a visual type of person. I really like visuals a lot. Uh, so, so I started noticing that, um, actually I didn't really start noticing that until Xbox one X came out. I can't, I bought the Xbox one X. I was getting a cleaner image quality on that. I was looking over at the PlayStation four pro and I was seeing, you know, like the, uh, the fuzzy images. So I coined the name checkerbird rendering cause it looks like checkerbirds and they make fuzz K you know, it's, it's fuzzy 4k. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, it all kind of stems from there. Like, I was just like, oh, I don't really like it. You know, Xbox is giving me, you know, like a, a native Im a native image. Even if the native image is lower than 4K, it still looks better when it's when it's um, when it's up sampled to 4K than it does if it's like checkerboard rendering and then it's being upscaled to 4K. I just kind of preferred that overall look of the Xbox One X. Well, uh, and, and here's the thing, because you would get that sharper image, which drastically changed this generation um, on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Like, my, my tastes have completely changed just in one generation, just in two new consoles coming out. Um, if you go back and you look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the PlayStation 5, it kind of still has that sharp look to it. Whereas on the Xbox Series X, it has more of a softer look to it. And I started to kind of appreciate and really like that softer look on the Xbox version of, of, of games, like the, the whole crisp, sharp thing wasn't really wasn't really doing it for me anymore. I was like, oh, I don't really know if I like that. That looks gamey, that looks more natural. And and my my tastes of visuals have, have changed significantly. Um, <laughs> DLSS had that same effect that the PlayStation the PlayStation 5 had, that, that sharper look. And I would look at that and I'd be like, oh man, I don't know if I really like that too much. And then FSR, you know, FSR would kind of have that, you know, like that, that softer look to it. And I, and I like that softer image now more, a, a, a lot more. I, I like that. It makes the, it makes the image quality look more dense. It makes it look better. So in my, my testing and my overall first impressions of FSR three, um, once you turn that on and you turn on the frame generation, uh, when I tested Forspoken, I tested Forspoken with three settings. I tested it with HyperRx, uh, which is just letting the software do all of the upscaling or whatever. Um, that there pretty much defaults, well, because I was running it at 4K, at 4K, that pretty much defaulted it to, you know, RSR um, and, and Anti-Lag and Anti-Lag Plus and Boost or whatever. So, so you get all of those, but you don't, well, you, you don't get the RS, you don't, well, you do get, I mean, it basically just gives you like the, the, the FSR one, but at 4k, um, and it kind of made it look, you know, a little bit, a little bit more blurry, whatever. Um, not, not too blurry. It actually didn't look too terrible, but then when you, when I switched over to native AA, native AA gave it that more sharp, crisp look, um, that, that you would normally get with like a native 4k or whatever, and then switching it over to FSR three quality, and using that at 4K with the frame gen, well, all three of these, you know, had frame gen enabled. Actually, I don't think I enabled frame gen with the uh, 
with with just the regular one because i think you have to turn on the I, I don't know i'll have to go back i'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this i'm going to be looking at a lot more different um areas of each one of these games i'm going to be getting in there and and really looking at this and and trying to help you guys decide if this is something that that's going to work for you or not i came away rather impressed with the overall image quality of fsr3 in quality mode with frame gen enabled um, and having v-sync enabled all of that stuff it looks absolutely incredible almost indistinguishable from native 4k at a far higher frame rate this is a significant upgrade for people with forespoken that want to play this at a higher frame rate now i am running this on 7900 xt with a 5900 x and the overall stability um and and just the the way it felt felt incredible like when you watch the video you'll see the excitement that i have for this i'm not i i think that this here might have kind of changed my whole mind and my whole outlook on upscaling i i i've i've always kind of been that person that's just like oh, i don't know i don't know about it i don't know about it but after playing forspoken at 4K, it's such a high frame rate. Forspoken is actually absolutely one of my favorite games this year. After being able to play that at 4K and have it look so incredible and feel so smooth and so responsive um, with, with the frame generation on there, I was like, wow, this is incredible. And mind you, I'm getting almost 120 frames a second at 4K with quality. When before, it would be with quality FSR 2, it would be almost 60 frames. But now I am surpassing that, doubling my frame rate on that particular game, and I'm really enjoying it. And and it is pretty much a double, a, a double, a doubling of the frame rate, like right off the bat. And I was like, wow, this is actually really, really good. Um, <clears throat> image quality and image stability with FSR three and frame gen. I I, I came away very impressed with that. The uh, distant trees look good. There's no blur when I'm running, uh, when I'm panning the camera. I, I, you do see like a little bit of a little bit of uh, um, an instability in like the the overall vegetation depending on the the speed of the camera movement when you're turning it but not enough to like be distracting like it used to be like with fsr1 or fsr2 it would be a little bit more distracting if you go if you'd go down you know in, in the quality level so when i when i saw that and and the experience the overall um the overall, you know, just just the bigger picture of the whole game, you know, uh, higher higher frame rate, with better stable image quality. I was like, wow, this is impressive. This is absolutely impressive, and this is still technically, um, this this isn't even like being upscaled with AI. This is 100% software based, um, OpenGL. Like anybody, any developer can use this. Anybody can, and and, and that's cool. It's not proprietary to just one set of graphics cards you can use this on your amd or you can use this on amd cards nvidia graphics cards as well as intel cards so the um the fact that you can benefit from these um from these upscaling techniques and be able to utilize frame gen on other competitors graphics cards that's a testament right there that like amd's like yeah dude we care about games we care about gamers we don't care if you're over there playing on an NVIDIA graphics card. We want you to enjoy your game and maybe think of us if you like our technology. Maybe maybe give us a nod or something. You know what I mean? Like, we care about games and we care about gamers. That's the message that I take away from being able to, from, from other gamers being able to utilize these techniques on their cards. Now, one of the biggest reasons that I left NVIDIA was the fact that i didn't get dlss3 on my 3080 i was like really dude i just bought this card and you're gonna completely not give me this new feature but amd is gonna give it to you amd is gonna 100 percent let you use fsr3 on your nvidia graphics card one of my friends is actually testing that out has been testing it out today on a 3080 and he's seeing a significant improvement in overall gameplay and that's awesome why couldn't NVIDIA do that for us? Why couldn't NVIDIA put gamers first instead of profits? I, I it, it just, it, it blows my mind that they were willing to give up a customer like me. <laughs> Seriously, I spend a lot of money on, on stupid stuff 
They were willing to give up a customer like me and push me into the arms of their competitor over greed? And you can't tell me DLSS 3 would not work on a 3080. If it would work on a 4060, it could easily work on a 3080. So the fact that they pushed me into the arms of AMD where I'm completely happy and satisfied now? <laughs> wow, what were you thinking, NVIDIA? That's just insane. So let me move over to Immortals of Avium. Um, my, my time with this game was a little bit less. Um, well, my, my, uh, my overall time making a video on this one was a little bit more brief. I did about half the time that I did for my Forspoken video, uh, because I haven't completed Immortals of Avium yet. So I do plan on going back there and playing more through this. So you will get more content from Immortals of Avium. Um, there are some things that I did notice with Immortals of Avium. You do get a little bit of, uh, you do get a little bit of, uh, screen jutter when, when you, uh, when you pan the camera, at least in the one area I was in, I was in this, I'm in this big building, um, and, and it's, and there's just like so much going on in there. Very beautiful visuals, everything. And, and, and it's just when, when I would turn the camera, I'd get like this little jetter. So I loaded out into another save into a completely different area. And I was sitting there looking at it. And I remember everybody like showing off like the, the, um, what was it called with the FSR two or whatever, like some, uh, some ghosting or whatever that they were showing off. I spent a couple minutes looking for this ghosting in the video. Like, you'll be able to see it. And I tested it with all four levels. I went from quality to balance to performance to ultra performance looking for this ghosting with the AMD F, um, FSR 3. Like, this looks a lot better. Like, significant improvement in overall visuals. And it literally doubled my frame rate. Just like they said it would do. It doubled my frame rate. And when going from a native resolution over to over to FSR three with frame gen, doubled my frame rate. I was at what like thirty frames per second before. Turned on the FSR quality, um, and that boosted me up to almost sixty frames. So when I got on with frame gen, that gave me almost you know sixty seventy frames a second. You know at at four K with quality in, in that first area that I was playing around in. But then when I got out into the uh, into the other open world, I'm about eighty frames a second. Uh, 1440p, I switched to 1440p, did a little bit of testing with there. Um, significant improvement in overall quality, stability, everything. Uh, 1440p is probably the, uh, the best way to play um, Immortals of Avium. Avium. On the 7900 XT, it just gives you the bang for your buck. You get high refresh rate, um, almost up to 120 frames a second, and a lot more consistent frame pacing in that one for me. Definitely better off with the 1440p. The 4K was still like the frame pacing just felt like a little bit off when you would turn the camera. You'd kind of see it um, kind of kind of jump a little bit. So maybe maybe a few more bugs to work out on that game. But 1440p completely solved that problem for me. Um, went away. Feels very, very nice. Really fun to play. Um, great overall average frame rate for that one. You guys will see in the video I went through that. I was talking through the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, th I think that this is a significant improvement for people that are really into upscalers and that really like that stuff. I think that you'll be quite happy with this. I think the overall image quality is going to impress a lot of people, um, even even the people that are usually highly critical of FSR 3 or FSR 2. I think that these people are going to, after seeing what I saw from Fort Spoken and Immortals of Avium, if they come out and they still continue to highly criticize this, they're never going to stop. They're never going to stop criticizing it because this looks incredible now. Significantly better than anything before it. And it really does put gamers first in terms of pricing, in terms of quality, being able to utilize these tools on multiple generations of graphics card and multiple vendors of graphics cards, even on your ROG Ally you'll be able to utilize this technology. So the fact that you can use this across all of that lets you know that this is definitely built for gamers. Yes, NVIDIA makes some great tech. They have some incredible AI upscaling. But at the, what cost? FSR 3 doesn't need to beat DLSS 3. It just needs to be a strong alternative. And I believe that FSR 3 is actually at that place now to where when these developers update it and and that's the thing i've noticed fsr2 quality has already improved 
FSR three is even a, a little bit better. It's it's it is definitely better. And then you get the frame generation on top of that, which really does feel good on a controller. Now, I haven't tried to play this on a mouse and keyboard. I'm not a mouse and keyboard gamer, so that probably will never affect me. But in terms of just overall quality and stability and, and, and like the way it feels, yes, I am I'm 100% a believer of frame generation technology going forward. I, I do. I believe in it. I think it is. I think it can actually make the experience better and get rid of some of those things you know like the the micro stutter some of that other stuff i do think that there is a i do think there's a place in my heart for magic <laughs> um yeah fsr3 is great uh i do kind of regret that i'd never had the opportunity to try that on video on nvidia because there's no way that i'm going to go buy an nvidia card just to try that when i already have this 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 is already sufficient for my gaming needs, and I think I'll be sticking with AMD for 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 a very long time, man. So if you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, hit me up in the comments if you guys got any questions. If there's any games you want me to test, uh, they also did um, release a beta driver that we could play around with AFM, AFMF amd uh fluid motion frames i'm going to be playing with that testing out some dx11 games testing out some dx12 games we're going to go ahead and we're going to fully utilize this this weekend and we're going to try to find the best settings that we can for for this overall for this overall card and for this for this technology so all right my friends we'll see you guys in the next one thank you greatly for watching and uh don't forget to hit that like and subscribe